for milestone four. So milestone four, as you see, it's designed in a way it kind of looks like uh, the part two of the workshop. So for milestone two, you're doing the exact same thing that you have done in your uh, workshop, but you do it on the book class. So let me bring it up. So <clears throat> if we look at the workshop, oh, actually, I should come and bring it over here. And again, please, uh, I would appreciate it if, um, uh, go th if going through it, see if there is any typos or anything like that, let me know to fix it. <clears throat> so what happens is that <clears throat> you are going to use libh, utils, date, streamable, and publication in this one, obviously. Uh, you have the date for the for all these things, utils you need to do. If you have anything in it, you're going to use it. Uh, and lib has all the constants in it. So a book is essentially a book is essentially uh, a class that is derived from the publication class. So we can say a book is a publication that has author's name. A newspaper, a magazine, it doesn't have an author name. There are several different authors for each article. A book has a specific author for that publication. Therefore, we create a book class. Book class is essentially a publication with an author's name. That's it. And, it, and that's the only dynamic thing that it has in addition to the publication. So you create it empty by default in a safe, empty state and you implement all the things that you need to make sure that it complies with rule of three copy construction copy assignment destructor everything work calls the base class and everything works perfectly uh, you override all the virtual methods of a publication so the type has to be overwritten over uh, you must overwrite type you must overwrite write overwrite read overwrite set and uh, boolean conversion the type returns B and that's all it does the character B that's all it returns so type returns B so when you have different objects because type is virtual you can simply call the virtual function type and it tells you what type of a thing you have is it is this a book or is this uh, uh, a uh, uh, what should we call it I, is this um, a publication so it's gonna tell it's gonna kind of tell you so the write method, uh, first it will invoke the write of the base class. So first it lets the base class do its writing. And after that, it, uh, if this is a console I.O., so you're going to use the console I.O. to recognize it. You've done it already. If it's a console I.O., you print a single space. And this is the tricky part. Then you print the author's name. But you cannot just print the author's name. If the author's name is greater than the width you have to cut it short which means you have to print it character by character up to that length if it is smaller than width then you have to go to o stream set the width and the fill and print it in that width okay so that's what you need to do and then afterwards you put a space and a bar after and you're done if the incoming thing is not console input output you put a tab and you put the whole author's name and we're done. Are we okay with the with the right? All right. And read now. Okay. For read again, you first invoke the read, so the base class does its thing and reads all the information that it needs. Now you need to read an adi the additional author's name. If it's a console out input console io first you have to skip the backslash in from the last last entry so you skip the backslash in then you prompt author with column then you read the author's name from iStream simple and straightforward and that read is uh, an unknown size read okay you have already done it in the workshop so you know how to do it in util in workshop 9 uh, in utils it tells you how to read it with unknown size if you want to but to make it simple if you don't want to use that you can assume it's 256 i would use the utils one because it's easier it has all the length that you want so you don't have you don't have to worry 
then if the incoming argument is not uh, console output which means uh, you're not writing on a screen or reading from screen then you have to ignore a tab character because you're reading from file now ignore a tab character and then read the author's name right to the uh, uh, backslash and at the end professor yes uh, excuse me um just just a question that you touch base this 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 this, this part um um is there any any way to uh like the same functionality like get line is providing us but without extracting the the um the last the the the, the, the limiter character yes it's is called get instead but... of get line call get it will not uh it will not extract the last one but that, but, that but works it won't fail. but it well. won't fail but that works as well for string yeah get is exact same signature as get line so exactly as if you are writing get line remove the line and call get exactly yeah. like get line the difference is that it won't this it won't extract the last glass character it will let it be the problem over here is that if it reaches the size it will not fail the i stream if i recall correctly test it write a little tester program and check it out okay, okay. if you write get line if get line reaches to the size it fails the i stream i stream goes to a fail state but if you are doing a get and it doesn't extract then you can uh then it will not fail the i stream it will just uh, uh stop and the rest you can read you can flush or do whatever you want to so you can do flush afterwards if you want to something like that but yes of course get it get is the one and if you okay. want get line uh, not to extract there is a function called unget that you can put the last thing back into the keyboard don't use it though <laughs> okay. okay so unget Thank actually you. puts the last thing that you receive it puts it back <clears throat> okay so uh that's that one uh, now the set function what does it do it sets the member ID so first you invoke the member ID of the publication but the difference is that when you set a member ID of a book it means you are loaning out the book because of that immediately set the date to the current date so the set not only sets the member ID but sets the date to the current date okay which is very simple you can do it in two seconds uh, the operator boolean uh, conversion it calls the operator boolean up application and what is required for this to be uh, valid so you put them all together and that becomes your uh, a book and everything's gonna work out and it's gonna read the book and the output is gonna be like this so when you look at the output the output's gonna look something like this so it, it that the tester is exactly like publication because it's essentially child of the publication the only difference is that publication reads right down to here where this one actually reads the whole author and goes right to the end so that's the difference <clears throat> so uh, that is uh, that uh, any questions about ms4 milestone 4 All right, and milestone uh, four is very simple when I give you five days, so it's very possible that I'm going to actually post the last milestone earlier. <clears throat> so it, this is a very simple one. You can do it very quickly. Um, and uh, I'll probably I'll put, so <clears throat> like this, you have, I think, around eight days for the last milestone. <clears throat> but if I, if I can put it out in a couple of days, then you can have much more time to, to work on it. Um, is there anything that you want to ask before I uh, end the session for Milestone 4? Okay, so uh, final poll. Um, any questions whatsoever about anything, workshops uh, or Milestone? Do you have any question? Ahmed, go ahead. And Brian, too. Yeah, so Ahmed, you start. I think your microphone doesn't work. You should either restart your audio or I don't know something because I can't hear you. So Brian, you go. Ahmad's gonna fix his his uh, audio. 
Uh, just wondering, uh, I was taking a look at the, the files from workshop number nine, and um, it was like, I recall, it was in the um, Boolean op overloading operator. Mm -hmm. uh, you you use in the class that you provide, um, you use the um, a string. And let, me as... check, let me check, let me check, let me just bring it up so I see what you're talking about. I'm going to actually bring up that. And so you said in, in, um, in, uh, <clears throat> let me just bring, the, that's workshops, workshop nine. Are you talking about the, the person? Yes, it was somewhere in person. So, some, somewhere in, this is person. Let's go somewhere in person. So, <clears throat> so what you're talking about here? Which the part? Boolean uh, op, 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 operator overload. This is the one. This so you are, yeah, that specific line, the 53. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, how does it work the line 53? Because M name is an, a string, an, a pointer string, mm -hmm. uh, and you are also pointing the, the index zero. So okay. it, that's it, just it, curious. It, I am no, yeah, this is that. called lazy evaluation. Okay, that is in C language. It comes from C language, not C++. What lazy evaluation is, <clears throat> it's essentially this. It it's like, works like an electric circuit. So um, think about it this way. So if you have, uh, um, I'm sorry for my artistic values over here, but let's say this is a circuit and I have two switches over here like this and another switch over here like this. Holy schmoly. Then we go to a light bulb and then we have over here a battery okay and it's connected like this okay now um brian if for the light bulb to go on and this is switch a and switch b okay for light bulb to go on how many switches should be closed either a or b so if switch a is closed do you need to check to see if switch b is closed no no because the electricity will pass over correct Yes. It's the exact same thing like this. If I have a switch like this, two switches like this, and I have a light bulb, <laughs> okay, that's a light bulb and a battery, okay? Now that's switch A, and this is switch B, okay? If switch B, A is disconnected, is there any way using switch B I can turn the light on or off? No, correct? No. If this is false, then I don't need to check B, correct? Yeah. It is off. That's exactly what happens in C language, which means I have a pointer, okay? And that pointer is pointing to a piece of memory. And that piece of memory of mine has something in it, correct? That's how it works. That's how what an array is, correct? Yes. Okay. So this is my M name and this, whoa, not like that. And this is my M name zero. Do we agree? Yes. Okay. Now, if M name is null, do I need to check to see if this is empty or not? No, it's not. No. Here. So that's what I'm going to write in here. I'm going to say return M name. So if M name is null, because it's and, everything else is ignored. It's not going to check anything. It's just going to return false. But if M name is not null, then it's true. Then it has to check the next one to see if it's not, because this is an and like the circuit that I drew for you. So the AND was like this, right? So I have four ANDs over here, four things like that back to back. And then it comes to the light bulb. This is what it is, right? And the battery goes over here and it comes up over here. So I have these, this is like, I have M name, M name, self, last name, last name. So this is first one, second, third, fourth. If the first one is false, it doesn't it it will not check the others why did i do it in this direction because if i do it in the other direction if m name is null there is no m0 that's going to give me a segment segmentation fault 
I cannot test this one first. You follow? Yeah, correct. And so then... lazy, lazy evaluation only works with um, uh, pointers. No, for anything. I, you can actually, I can actually, it's, it's, this is actually IPC 144, but I don't care. I'm going to explain it to you. Uh, let's say, uh, let me just open, uh, what do I do? What, where do I open? Let me just, uh, let, so actually let me create a, let me create a, uh, clear all, let me create um, a project for today. Lazy evaluation is one of the most commonly used uh, things in C and C++ because it makes the code extremely fast. So we are in workshops today. So I'm going to go to that one and uh, select folder and I'm going to call it W9 create. So it's just to show you what I mean. Let me create a add existing uh, new item prg.cpp prg.cpp and um, in here I'm gonna go include IO stream. This is this is C. I don't have to do C but I'm doing it because we are doing C That's it. Uh, you using namespace std int main return zero so let's say i have an array of integers okay so i have an array of integers and i have some values in here one four okay now i want to see how many of these things are more than five if i want to write with regular thing i have to write over here for int <coughs> set to i let's say int i set to zero i less than oops how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so less than twelve and i plus plus right if i'm using ip like ipc 144 knowledge kindergarten version of it i'm going to go if a i greater than five correct then in here i'm going to say uh, i'm going to have over here say uh int uh, num is set to zero so i have zero in num now i'm going to say over here num plus plus and in here i can say c out num values are more than five Brian are we okay with this code that yes. I have written so if I run this program hopefully if it doesn't give me an error in three lines of code it's gonna tell me seven values are more than five right now what I can do to make this faster instead of because if statement when it's translated into machine language it, into assembly language it essentially goes to a jump so it, it's a condition and it says do this otherwise jump go to the next thing so it's a jump if I don't want that to happen all I need to do is to do this Now, plus plus or plus equal one, just to make sure we understand what happens over here. So, what is this doing over here? Must be a mod. Oh, yeah. So, now, Brian, tell me. If AI is less than five, what is this condition? The first circus. It's going to be false, correct? False, yeah. When it gets false, it doesn't check the rest. Therefore, all uh, num will not be added by one. If this one is true, then it has to check the second one to see if it's true or not. It doesn't accomplish anything, but it's just a statement. So if I run this program, still what you see over there is seven values. Seven values are more than five. But the difference is that this is lightning fast. This is much faster than an if statement. Because it's just a CPU calculation, there is no jump happening in here. You follow? 
Yes. And this is what we call lazy evaluation. We do many things like this to print error messages and stuff. So we can actually do something like this. I can actually do this. You see that? What is happening over here? Again, if this thing is true, it wants to evaluate the second part. And that causes C out to get evaluated and bigger is going to get printed five times. And if I run it, then this is going to happen like this. Bigger, bigger, bigger. <laughs> you see that? Easy. Are we good? Yes. All right. Perfect. Okay, so that's that. So let's call that lazy evaluation. Zero, one. Lazy evaluation and that's why you always and you can do the same thing with or statement but or statement is exact opposite if it's true the rest will be ignored right okay yeah we need to know that okay and uh, yeah go ahead and what will happen if um when you are returning the pointer so you're saying return pointer how, how would that that behave like if has something uh, that not is something different than a null pointer uh, that, that is so in, C, in C language, when you are checking something as a condition, so when you put and, this is a condition, correct? If you put a value in here, if the value is false, if, if the value is zero, it considers that false. If it's anything but zero, it considers that true. Simple. So if I put a pointer in here, if pointer is null, zero is false it considers it a false if the pointer is not null any value in it it considers it a true oh i see so if that's the pointer... again c that's again standard c so this is a c thing in c anything but zero is true if considered as a condition so if, if you just write if if I write over here something like this, <clears throat> if AI, okay, in here I can say C out not zero. I don't need to actually put over there if AI is not equal to zero. No seasoned C++ programmer does that. Nobody wants to waste time over here, right? If it's not equal to, wait, why am I typing more stuff when I don't need it? So in here, it simply checks, okay, if this is, so if I had few zeros in here, so if this is a zero, and this is a zero, and this is a zero now, now it's going to, when it reaches to here, it's not going to print zero, it's going to say non-zero. So in here, I can say AI not, not zero, else... See out AI is zero. I know it's a silly thing to say, but it's just recognizing, right? So if I run this, you'll see that. Oh, I changed the wrong one. Copy. And let me just go back to what it was before. I wanted to. Okay, so that's the lazy evaluation. Let me bring this one up. Huh. Did I lose it? Oh my goodness, I thought I copied it. Darn it. So if AI see out A I not zero else see out a i is zero did i answer the question or i was just, i said something that you didn't want it all clear professor okay. thank you okay so now now if i run it then 
you will see it's going to say this is not zero, this is zero, so that is zero, and one by one, it's going to go through it one by one. So, um, yeah, where is where are the zeros? None of them are zero. Oh, because that this the other one I changed it. Shoot. So I let me. Put, I didn't have any zeros. In here. <laughs> any zeros in here? It didn't make sense, did it? Okay. Now it's going to have three zeros over there. So there we go. So zero is zero. All right, Ahmed. Did you get your voice back? Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, back what's in. up? Tell me, what's up? Um, so yeah, so I had a question about uh, milestone three, but I'm I'm gonna review the code first and then get back to you. Sure thing, no problem. Okay, so I'm gonna say anything, anything but zero is true. Dot cpp. All right. Any other question, anyone? Any other question? Do we have any question? Okay. I guess we're done for today. Have yourself a beautiful day, and uh, um, I'll see my students on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, get ready for class templates, um, and um, anyone else welcome to join if they want to. Have yourself a beautiful day. No problem. Have a beautiful uh, Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for that. Have a good one. Tayaba, you had a question? Good one. I just want to ask if uh, we have a test today, quiz. Quiz today? Um, yeah. I have to set it up. It's going to be later. But I had to do the milestone. I'll, s I'll send you a message mm -hmm. as soon as I'm done. Okay. Thank okay. you. Have a beautiful day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.